Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Kate McLean, and I lead the product and content marketing team for the Cisco Cloud Security Group. The primary solution or service that our team covers is Cisco Umbrella. For years, Umbrella has been, lead, has been a leading provider of cloud-delivered security, helping businesses of all sizes across all industries connect to the internet with confidence from any device. During today's coffee hour, we'll hear from one of our amazing customers, Ford, on how they relied on Umbrella in the face of the pandemic to protect their over 100,000 remote workers. Now, even when we plan for the unexpected, our business can still be disrupted at any time. Hello, 2020. Now with the unprecedented shift to remote work, organizations have had to quickly enable access to critical apps everywhere without compromising network performance or security protection. Now I'm super excited to be joined by Patrick Milligan, the Chief Information Security Officer at Ford to hear about his experience firsthand. Now, Patrick, I can't imagine being responsible for security of more than 100,000 people during a time of, let's face it, chaos and uncertainty. Now, before I hand it over to Patrick, just a quick reminder, um, we will be taking questions live at the end of the show. We want to hear from you, so please send along any questions you have for Patrick uh, using the comments section if you're watching on Cisco.com, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebook, or use the hashtag Cisco Chat on Twitter. Okay, enough out of me. Patrick, your turn. Uh, so can you introduce yourself to the virtual audience here and share how you spend your days at Ford? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So Patrick Milligan is noted um, Chief Information Security Officer at uh, Ford Motor Company. Uh, first off, thanks for having me, and thanks everybody who was able to join. I hope this finds everybody um, safe and healthy in these crazy times we're living in. Um, I've had the um, benefit and privilege of uh, being an employee at Ford for uh, over 30 years now. Um, this is actually my second go around in the, in the Chief Information Security Officer position, but in my time at Ford, I've actually started out in manufacturing engineering. I've worked in product development and uh, uh, wound up over in information technology as well. So I've been in role um, since early this year, um, right at the, um, you know, right at the turn of the year, obviously, and just before we went into the um, pandemic situation, which was quite interesting. Um, how I day, how I spend my days at Ford, we certainly find ourselves in a different situation, don't we? It seems like uh, this is how I spend my days at Ford, um, sitting in front of my laptop and WebEx meetings, one after another after another. Um, the pace of work has certainly changed. Um, uh, how we're doing business globally has certainly changed. Um, in some ways, it's put uh, everybody on an even footing because we're all participating in audio, video, data conferencing, or webcast similar to this. Um, so there's, you know, obviously pros and cons to it, but yeah, that that, that seems to be the um, uh, the the standard mode of operation these days. Uh, my commute is a lot better. Uh, being in the automotive industry, it's, certain, it's certainly intriguing to uh, to think about that. Every time I hop in my car and I see how few miles are on it, it's like, wow, this is significantly different. Um, uh, so, you know, just a, just a different time we're living in. Now, what a crazy time to, to jump into the CISO role right before uh, the pandemic, you know, joining, joining and taking on that responsibility um, at the beginning of this year. Uh, so eight months into the pandemic, 2020 has been, as you noted, crazy, um, crazy. So we've seen business disruption, work from home, clearly the new norm. You're talking about being, you know, on WebEx meetings all day long, uh, predicted to stay here for quite some time, right? Um, curious to hear your thoughts on how you've adapted and what the future work environment will look like for Ford. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, you know, and, and uh, first off, everybody's situation is different. Um, uh, I have so much empathy for um, people who may be um, dual income couples where, um, you know, both parents are working, you got your kids at home doing remote schooling. Uh, it's just, you know, um, uh, my wife, Joan, and I have three um, grown kids who are, uh, uh, you know, they're out on their own. So, Looking back, I can't imagine, you know, doing this at a time when they were younger. So, like I say, it's situational. Um, uh, for me personally and my wife, it's been a blessing. We've been working remotely here from, um, I guess you'd officially call it 
northern lower Michigan since uh, um, first quarter of this year. Um, so the the uh, adaptation for me has been uh, it's it's you know it's been very favorable. Yeah, as I noted before, there's challenges of everybody working remotely, but from a, a you know a purely personal standpoint, it's been um, it's been fantastic, and it's you know it's it's nice to know that individ not not only companies but individuals can adapt as we have and and um, uh, be able to work remotely um, like we are. So again, situational for me personally, it's been great, but I, I can imagine the challenges for for others. Um, and, you know, as I said early on, hopefully nobody's direct family has been impacted by um, the pandemic situation we find ourselves in. Uh, you know, I, I, I can only imagine how that would just exacerbate the whole situation. Um, what I see going forward for Ford, um, uh, so obviously we went into um, the remote work um, environment in March of this year. Um, I know we've come out and publicly acknowledged that, and, and we're by no means, you know, doing anything different than uh, anybody else in our industry or across other industries. We, we pay attention to um, uh, what, what's being shared, um, you know, globally around what's going on, and we make our decisions accordingly. Not, you know, first and foremost, to protect the safety of our employees, and and also what you know, then subsequently watching out for the company. But we have announced that a significant portion of our workforce won't go back in to 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 work anytime before June of next year. Um, and just based on the success that not only we're seeing, but everybody in industry is seeing with the remote workforce, I, I can imagine there will be a significant portion of our um, uh, viable remote workers that will will operate this way um, uh, indefinitely going forward. So, um, you know, we're we're in the same situation everybody else is. Um, um, you know, praying for everybody's safety through the next wave we're going through right now, and seeing seeing what comes out of it. But yeah, uh, for for people successfully working remotely like myself right now, we, we won't be going back to the office and, and forward anytime before June of next year. Now, and I know that uh, to help with the shift to remote work, um, you uh, and your team accelerated the adoption of technology, right? You accelerated the adoption of umbrella uh, to protect your remote workforce and, and quickly. And again, I think I said this at, at the start, you know, 108,000, uh, I think is the, or over 100,000 uh, employees, and that's a lot of people. Um, so, you know, I, I hope with this next question I ask, you can tell us what you were hoping to achieve with Umbrella. I know it's a loaded question, so I'll, I'll break it into some digestible chunks here. Um, so, you know, how did you manage such a rapid uh, pivot to remote work back in March? You know, what was that like for your team to enable that? Um, yeah, uh, you know, and not just the cyber team, but for the um, uh, the information technology team, and, and basically all of the all all of the functions who found themselves thrust into this situation, but because even the people we ha we do have um, that have gone back into the office um, when we initially went into um, you know the lockdown scenario, everybody was working remotely. Um, but there was a tremendous amount of work that was done leading up to that. Like I say, we you know the senior leadership of the company was doing a phenomenal job of paying attention to what was going on. Um, uh, in our global operations and 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 doing the right things to prepare us for going into this. So we, we have always had uh, a significant remote work capability just because being a global company and 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 having to support um, uh, the business on a global basis on you know every day. We always had a function of remote work. It just wasn't as significant as obviously what we found ourselves thrust into. So the the significant prep preparation um, leading up to when we thought we may go into a, a lockdown state um, was obviously ensuring our global infrastructure um, uh, was at the levels and capabilities it needed to be to, to support us going into that environment. Uh, the, the teams did a phenomenal job in terms of our preparedness when we did um, go into that state in in North America, it happened to be early early March, but you know global timings were different. But um, uh, the move to to remote work was actually a good news story for Ford Motor Company, just just based on you know some of the activity we had had in flight and our our normal course of business before it happened. But um, it, it, you know I think the I think the bigger testament was to to 
our employees and the employees of, you know, all of the companies that are probably listening in today. It, this really came down to how did people deal with um, the situation, uh, the challenges everybody's going through, potential adversity, and, you know, we're a, we're a pretty resilient bunch. So I think it comes down to, you know, the success of all of us as individuals as to how we're dealing with it. But, the, you know, the um, Ford and a, a lot of other companies out there as well did a really good job of, of, of managing the environment. And now you mentioned the global nature of the business. So, you, you know, your remote workers, um, I imagine they're located everywhere. Um, is that accurate to kind of assume uh, in terms of your, uh, your workforce distribution? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the 100 plus thousand number you referenced, yes, that is our absolutely our global workforce. And I know, unfortunately, at these crazy times, um, from a cybersecurity perspective, our adversaries, you know, attackers are, are taking advantage um, and so it's important to ensure that you have your employees protected, right? Because, you know, uh, we know phishing attacks that were using pandemic related terms to kind of pry up on people, um, you know, launch launch email attacks to, to kind of infiltrate the network. Um, so I understand that you're an AnyConnect customer um, and that you used our AnyConnect integration to roll out the umbrella protection to your users. Um, you know, can you talk a little bit about that experience rolling out the protection? Um, yeah, and those were um, those were, were some of our challenges or opportunities, however you want to refer to them. More um, uh, and and I like that you pointed out. Uh, you know, one of our primary areas of focus was protecting our employees. There's 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 certain things we do when everybody's on the Ford campus. Um, there's there's uh, protections you can put in place and and. Um, controls you can have that, that, you know, not only protect the company, but protect our individuals, our, our employees, and individual security. So but that was one of the biggest changes when we went to this um, remote work environment was all of a sudden people weren't coming into a Ford facility, getting on the um, Ford Motor Company private network and, and doing their job. All of a sudden we're working remotely and, um, uh, you know, I referenced, we made sure we did uh, 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 we made sure there were viable infrastructure for employees to connect via VPN, but we had also, um, uh, in hindsight, uh, thankfully, moved to um, other remote technologies to support um, collaboration uh, within the employee base. Um, so not everybody was going to be um, connected in the same way um, in the midst of going through their their um, daily jobs, but first and foremost, in that remote in that remote work environment, what we wanted to do was ensure uh, we were doing everything we can we could do from a corporate perspective to protect our employees, our employees themselves. Because um, uh, as you know, yeah, the the um, the bad actors and the 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 threats that were out there and people who who you know. Um, really didn't care of the sensitive nature of things they were poking on were actually, you know, there, there were a lot of uh, attempted areas of compromise that, you know, and still are right now of taking advantage of uh, remote workers. So that was first and foremost, our mind was protecting them. And that was really the gist behind um, uh, our accelerated deployment of, of the AnyConnect capability. And that did, that, that did require us to, um, upgrade our VPN client globally as well. So it wasn't just the deployment of over 100,000 uh, umbrella clients. We, in advance of that, we had to upgrade our VPN client. So, um, you know, a lot of great work on inside Ford, whether that be the certification of, of those software loads and getting it deployed to our Ford assets in the field. But really what we did with it was it, even when you were not connected to the Ford Motor Company network via VPN, we provided a level of um, security for our employees that they benefited from while they were on the Ford network, and we were able to deliver that to them when they were off the Ford network to, again, first and foremost, protect them as individuals as best we could. Um, and at the same time, it benefited us from a, a corporate perspective, obviously, because those protections are obviously paramount to our, you know, security and depth environment within the company as well. Yeah, I think we can all admit um, the amount of screen time we're spending is probably larger now um, because especially during lockdown when you when you actually can't really safely leave your home, um, mm -hmm. you know, spending more time. So incredibly important to protecting to be protecting, you know, folks, whether they're again connected or, or 
for doing some personal surfing because we know that they could be taken advantage of in, in, in either scenario. Um, any kind of best practices that that you observed as you were, again, upgrading your, your VPN client or rolling out protection, any lessons learned um, to share with folks that, that are listening um, in? Uh, yeah, a handful. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll keep them at a high level. Um, uh, and, and, you know, it's not, not all these are necessarily new, but when you find yourself in a situation like that, the, the, you know, the importance of them kind of hits home, especially if you're not really doing them well. Um, but just the, uh, the absolute need, um, whoever your technology partners are or your service providers are, um, uh, the need to be in, in, in lockstep and have a full understanding of whether it be um, uh, technology cycle plans, um, adjacencies, but just ensuring you have knowledge of what needs to be in place, where it needs to be in place, how those components interoperate with each other and being, you know, just like I say, very tightly wound in with whether you're, you know, dealing with service providers, a software as a service platform, as a service, whatever, or um, you're doing stuff, um, Partnered with your um, supplier part, suppliers and technology providers, um, having a, a, a strong understanding of of those portfolios where they're going is obviously um, very important um, as you deal in this remote work environment. Because uh, again, we found ourselves in a situation of of working very effectively with Cisco, who's a very trusted partner, um, in deploying not only our our VPN client, but umbrella to over 100,000 users, and you just you can't do that without that 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 tight alignment. Um, uh, also, when you're thrust into these situations, it is it is uh, tremendously easy to find reasons not to do things. Um, you got to fight through that. You got to um, uh, push for um, looking for uh, how you do enable things because it's the right thing to do. It, it is so easy to find reasons not to do something when. Um, you know, the benefits um, not only, again, primarily to our employees themselves, but, um, you know, secondarily and very importantly to the company, it, you, you know, it was the right thing to do. Um, and then just, uh, you know, how you manage um, deployments at scale like that in, in a remote work environment. Um, you know, a lot of people in the industry re refer to it as blue-green deployments, but whatever. But, you know, we, you know, start start small. Um, um, Pick a, a smaller area of your workforce that you can control. Make sure you got the deployment nailed down. Um, resolve any issues you have, and then then go big. And you know the the hockey stick deployment curve. You can you can ramp it up very very quickly. But make sure you deal with all the issues before you really start trying to go into something like that. I'd probably leave it at those three. Those are great great lessons learned, and I'm sure everybody's benefiting from hearing kind of your insights. Um, and, and everything that you're sharing to date. Um, so do you feel like kind of being, again, thrust into this pandemic environment, um, has it evolved uh, or, or forced you into evolving and, and evaluating your strategy more quickly? Like, like you said, thinking about kind of where vendors are heading, um, future options to consider in terms of technology, do you feel that this is having an impact on your long-term um, approach to security, to IT, to, to kind of planning strategy? Um, I, absolutely. Um, and um, fortunately, I think it, in our case, it has just uh, reiterated the need to be operating that way. But, um, uh, you know, anybody in the cyber industry, this is always, uh, 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 it's an environment of continuous learning and continuous improvement because the, you know, the, the threat actors are continuing to find new and different ways of, of uh, attempting to compromise, uh, whether it be individuals or corporations and whether it be for monetary gain or anything else. So it has always been an environment of you, you can never stand still. You're never at a state of, of uh, hey, we're, we're good. Um, you have to continually be improving. Um, the environment everybody found themselves in uh, in the midst of this pandemic just absolutely reinforced the need to be um, in that state and potentially highlighted some gaps that um, we all may be able to improve on uh, as a result of being thrust into a situation where there, you know, there, there was no course of action of, well, hey, let's, <laughs> let's back that out or try to do something different. It was, no, you, you are in this operating environment and um, 
you know, it's it it was it was up to all of us to ensure everybody was protected accordingly and that we're protecting corporate assets as well. It's not specific to Ford that to cross industry. So it, yeah, if anything, does it affect future strategy? Absolutely. But I think it just reinforces something we've all found ourselves in in the security industry to start with. Awesome. So um, as you know, we've been running these coffee hours for a while now. Um, we've started asking the same the same question to our, our guests um, to get a pulse. And this is, I guess, future looking too as well. The, the newest security buzzword, SASE or Secure Access Service Edge. Um, so Patrick wanted to kind of throw it out to you. Uh, you know, Gartner recently coined this term about a year ago. Um, I know it's making waves, a big buzz already. Um, just curious to hear kind of your thoughts on possible impact today. And again, future, what, what you think the impact would be five, 10 years from now, um, this sure. concept of SASE. Um, yeah, uh, such a relevant topic. Um, uh, and it, again, just take the situation you find yourselves in with your, um, uh, your corporate edge is most likely not uh, the same as it was um, in January of this year. It's just, we've all been thrust into this environment of, of uh, your, uh, uh, your network edge or your employee edge is, is uh, vastly distributed with everybody working from home. So I, it, yeah, um, uh, it, is, it is absolutely gonna be paramount to the success of a lot of things. Um, uh, companies do going forward. Um, I would say it's not a silver bullet. It will be a it will be a, a very effective tool in everybody's toolbox in terms of uh, providing appropriate access to appropriate individuals for whatever they need to do in your operating environment. One one size is not going to fit all. There there you, you are going to. You're going to have needs for multiple connectivity options and um, uh, and multiple means of employing your remote remote workforce, um, whether they're in a permanent remote work environment or a flexible environment. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I think it, it I think it does already play a significant part um, in our in in the security framework of of. Uh, uh, the industry, and I think it will only um, accelerate going forward based on the success everybody has presently in the in the work from anywhere environment. Because that that the the whole concept behind that is you know it, it is spot on in the operating environment we find everybody finds themselves in today. So it's interesting you talked about um, you know doing it. Uh, at your pace, right? Um, you know, that's something in, in talking to other customers that seems to be resonating. Um, the concept of SASE is definitely a journey. Some are gonna do it very quickly um, and some are gonna kind of, uh, you know, take on a, a hybrid approach of transitioning to the cloud. And maybe, you know, the events of 2020 have been an accelerator for sure. Um, some folks will go back into an office and so there will be some kind of edge at a physical location uh, versus a, a home environment too. Um, but it, it seems to be something that, that folks are kind of unanimously in agreement on the concept of moving, moving, um, but over the course at a pace that makes sense for your business um, versus kind of a one size fits all um, approach. So, uh, and SASE in particular is really important for us at Cisco, right? You know, with, with our networking background, with our security background, in the umbrella world, cloud security, we continue to roll out more functionality into our service. Um, to help folks simplify, secure, and scale uh, for the future. So, um, you know, super happy to hear your, your thoughts and perspective on that. Um, and again, how, how these times also have influenced that thinking. Um, okay, so we're, we're coming to the end of our, our time here in terms of, um, you know, our prepared questions. So I um, want to give some time to everybody who's out there listening in. Um, so invite the audience. Remember, use whatever digital platform you're on. Put a comment out there, on, you know, on Cisco.com or Facebook. Use that hashtag Cisco chat on Twitter. Um, and so while I give everybody some time to submit their questions, we're going to play a little game because who doesn't love a game? Um, so I am going to say a series of random words, and Patrick, I'm going to ask you to say the first three things that come to your mind, and hopefully at that time, I'm sure we're going to get a slew of questions, but that gives folks uh, the time to kind of submit them. Okay, so you ready? Sure. Okay, uh, so the first question, fall. So the first three words that come into your mind with fall. Oh, I can't limit that to three words. It sure came and went pretty quickly. That's pretty hilarious. If I open the shade, you would see that the, the leaves are all gone. It, it, 
man, it was beautiful while it was here. It's one of my favorite seasons, but yeah, it's, it seems like we're quickly moving out of it. Short fall season snow is fast approaching, right? If it hasn't already. Um, okay. Next word, Turkey. <laughs> Uh, holidays, Thanksgiving is coming. Yeah, we're finding ourselves all in that situation of, um, and man, in the midst of the pandemic, I just hope those who have the opportunity to spend time with your families, you get the chance to do so. Yeah, I think we're all going to be, or have all been thinking about holidays differently, depending on what you've celebrated. It's been quite a few months. Holidays have come and yeah. gone, birthdays have come and gone, and we've all had to get creative in terms of staying connected and celebrating. Okay, work from home. How about three for that? Uh, uh, grateful. Um, uh, you know, I commented on it before. It, it has been an absolute blessing um, uh, for my wife and I. So I'm very, very, very grateful for it. Okay. And the last one before I, I start reading some questions from the audience here, umbrella. What what three words for umbrella? Uh, again, I'm not going to use three words. Uh, you know, when you find yourself getting caught in the rain, uh, that, that's when you always, uh, you, you better have that umbrella with you. It's, you know, you never think about it until... So you find yourselves in a situation where it's uh, absolutely uh, required. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, until the storm comes, right? Okay, so here we go. Some questions from the audience, and I'm sure they're going to be continuing to come in like hotcakes. So I'm going to read a couple um, and feel free again to pass. Um, but here we go. Uh, all right. Would you be able to provide a high level overview of how your SOC handles um, threats and policies? Okay, I'll start with that one. Um, and again, I'm, I'm going to try to find a way to answer your guys' questions without saying pass. Um, uh, obviously, you're talking about our SOC, so uh, I'm not, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of detail. Um, uh, uh, I will say we have um, uh, very effective practices, processes, procedures in place on a global basis to ensure we're doing the things you kind of questioned us on. Um, and we take advantage of benchmarking ourselves against industry and bringing in third parties to assess our capabilities because it's that important to us. Something we regularly report out to the board of directors on as well. But I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I can't go into specifics of how we do that. Sure, sure. Um, how about, okay, this one should be hopefully easier and less controversial. Um, how do you automate policy decisions um, from the, the products that you use, uh, you know, across your security ecosystem or, or Cisco in particular? How do you, how do you automate yeah. policy? Um, so, uh, yeah, that's got to be relevant to everybody, um, especially with the pace of change um, across all of our industries. The the automation and orchestration of not only security policies and security infrastructure, but apply that to any piece of the business you want. Um, automation and orchestration is fundamentally key to all of us operating on a more um, uh, adaptive and flexible and, you know, um, cloud scale, cloud speed, cloud not being a place type of computing. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's fundamental to all of our success going forward and being competitive. It's, you know, uh, it, the, the, you know, speed is paramount and automation and orchestration gets you there. Sure. Um, okay. Let's see. Got a question about low latency compute. How will the requirement of low latency compute, edge and 5G play into who manages and protects applications? Um, wow. So that will be, that will be different, um, for everybody. Those are the, those are the kind of decisions you have to make within your own corporate environment is to, you know, the type of data, how important that data is to you, what kind of, what's your, what's your risk tolerance, et cetera, as to where, um, where and to what level you leverage, um, edge and every uh, edge capabilities and everything that goes along with that. So. There's not, not a specific answer to that question. That's kind of kind of why I positioned it as, hey, it is, um, you know, it applies directly to SASE. It, it is a tool in your toolbox. Use it. Use it accordingly. Okay. Another question here. You talked about employee access. What about controlling third parties such as suppliers? Yeah. It. It. Um, 
becomes particularly relevant in that environment. Um, obviously, our uh, from an individual perspective and protecting our, our, our employees, that individual access is, is very top of mind for us. But when you start looking at the corporate benefits, yeah, we have, um, whether they be full service suppliers or um, uh, managed service um, providers or partners, that third party access is um, fundamental to our ongoing operations. And again, it, one size does not fit all in that environment. Uh, I, I mean, the question in the reference low latency connection, it is there There are so many multiple options you have to be able to provide depending, in, depending on where in the world that service is being provided or consumed and what the capabilities are and, and uh, you know, what is the application or infrastructure space you're dealing with. So um, you, 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 Similar to employee, you know, connectivity options, you have to have a full suite of options available for your suppliers, your partners. Um, keep keep going right down the line. Joint ventures, it's limitless. Okay, got another question. Um, could be specific to Umbrella or maybe not, just security in general. As you're considering rolling out technologies, you know, how are you evaluating uh, kind of the, the threat efficacy or detection? Um, you know, before you actually decide to purchase or implement? Um, uh, you know, I would say we leverage um, the same capabilities everybody else probably does. Um, all of our environments are different. Um, uh, having the opportunity to run um, uh, POCs where uh, you build in the appropriate um, intelligence and opportunity to, to see that, it, to your point, the efficacy of the tools in your own operating environment is absolutely um, fundamental to being successful, but you may find yourself in situations where you don't have the opportunity to do that. Um, I'm sure a lot of people caught themselves um, in the first quarter of this year dealing with challenges they may, they may not have been um, prepared for. And when you find yourself in those situations, you gotta leverage your, um, uh, whether they be government partners, industry partners, technology partners, um, industry analysts, whatever avenue you can find to ensure you're making the, uh, the most informed and intelligent decision you can to protect your company and your employees is, 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 the, is the appropriate way to go about it. Sure, as swiftly as possible in some scenarios, especially this year, right? Yep. Okay, um, so this one we'll see. There's a caveat if too sensitive to answer, fine that it's okay. Okay, so depending on your security concerns, can you reveal the current cloud space coverage and future plans? Um, uh, I would just say, okay, again, I made a statement earlier in this um, and Ford didn't coin this. Um, we got it from uh, one, of our, one of our technology partners. Um, uh, cloud isn't a, a place, it's a type of computing. Uh, we, we are all in on cloud. Um, uh, so I'm sure the question was kind of around public cloud, pick your provider. Um, Answer is probably yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. Um, oh, another stock one. So I'm gonna try, but again, if this is a too sensitive, feel free to pass. Um, would you consider good routines and policies available to SOC to be more effective than solid automation? So good routine, good policy versus automation. What's your, your standpoint there? Uh, I'm going to take an easy way out. You, you got to have both. You, you, you got to have both. Okay. Let's see. Anybody else out there in the, the cyber digital sphere with strong questions? I'll pause to give more time. Okay, I think it's getting quiet. You've just done such an amazing job, such a thorough job answering all of these questions. Um, so much compassion, so much information on this, this call. So Patrick, thank you so much um, for everything that you shared. Um, it's great to hear how Ford is kind of navigating, if you will, pun intended, these crazy times. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm personally happy to know that Umbrella has helped 
uh, Ford to deliver effective security, even in the times of business disruption, that we're able to help to keep your users protected, whether it's you know a, a corporate protection or a personal protection, um, because the global pandemic has been has been challenging for sure. Um, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your insights. Um, audience, thank you so much for your questions. Thank you so much for joining um, and tuning in. And we'll see you next time on our next coffee hour. I could see the tremendous impact right away. I recruited some smart students, and with Cisco's help, we were able to build an automated platform to connect food donors to communities with food insecurity. Not only are we putting good food to use, but also can track the positive impact on the environment. With sharing Cisco's purpose to power an inclusive future, we've been able to provide over two million meals across the US. My mother is my real hero. She taught me that a delivery so small could one day deliver on something so much bigger. Between a small gesture and a huge impact, there's a bridge. My name is Roy Vessel. I've been at Cisco for 12 years. Outside of Cisco, I work in teaching cybersecurity and cyber defense to youth through a program called Cyber Patriot and through the United States Air Force Civil Air Patrol.